Chrome extensions are extremely popular tools that can extend the functionality of your browser, and chances are good that you have a few of them installed right now. They can do things like storing all of your passwords, managing your tabs, changing words on a web page as you're writing them, blocking ads, and a lot more. All of these things are possible with Chrome extensions and are simply not possible with the usual website security model. But with great power comes great responsibility, especially in the case of Chrome extensions. Since your browser stores some extremely personal and sensitive data, such as your browsing history, your passwords, and credentials to access your banking information, how does a browser ensure that extensions are secure? That's what I will be covering today, the Chrome extension permission system. The reason I got into this topic is because I am building a Chrome extension. Voice Writer is a tool to help you write faster using your voice. It works on any website. Click the icon to start speaking. But for me, when I speak, a lot of the words are not appropriate for writing. So our AI will fix your grammar and make it appropriate for a written document in real time. Then you can copy and paste the text into your workflow. I use it every day to write things so much faster. Give it a try for free at this URL, link in the description. Now back to the video. Just a quick note, I will be assuming manifest v3 or mv3 for the rest of this video. There is an older permission system called manifest v2 or mv2, which is somewhat simpler than the current system. However, it is in the process of being deprecated, so I will not be talking about it further in this video. Starting with the basics is the manifest file or manifest.json. Every Chrome extension has a manifest file which contains basic information about the extension, like the name, the version, and the set of permissions that is required. Here it can request permissions like being able to read your cookies or your bookmarks or your downloads. Another set of permission is called host permissions. Host permissions let you inject a piece of JavaScript called a content script into all websites that match a set of URLs. Upon installing a Chrome extension, the user will be presented with a warning dialog explaining what can be done with these permissions. For example, it can read and change all your data on the websites you visit. This sounds kind of scary, and it is, because if you allow JavaScript to be run on all websites, then it can read and write any content on any page that you are browsing. Even if the extension is not doing anything malicious, there is no way for the platform to know that, so it can only assume the worst case scenario. So far, this is pretty straightforward. A Chrome extension has permission to some things and not other things, right? Well, if it only was so simple, now is where it gets interesting. A Chrome extension is actually made up of many different parts, and each part has different set of permissions. Let's talk about the main parts of a Chrome extension. The three most important components of most Chrome extensions is the content script, the pop-up page, and the background service worker. There are other components that are sometimes used, like DevTools page and the options page, but I will not talk about them in this video. These parts of a Chrome extension talk to each other by sending messages through the web extensions API. Let's first talk about the content script. The content script is the only part of a Chrome extension that can interact with the DOM of a web page. For example, setting the background color of the page to blue. Not sure if you ever want to do that, but if you wanted to, it is allowed and it's only allowed in the content script. What is not allowed is any use of the Chrome extensions API, even if the permissions is present in the manifest JSON. Content scripts are not allowed to access the higher privileged Chrome APIs. If they need to do so, they can only send a message to somewhere else in the extension, usually the background service worker, which listens to messages from the content script, gets the data from Chrome's APIs, and sends the data back to the content script. Basically, the content script is part of a lower privilege system that has access to the page DOM, but is separated from the rest of the extension by a process boundary. This is for security reasons that I'll go into more detail in the next section. Many other common operations, like fetching data from a website, are not allowed in a content script due to security restrictions such as cores and CSP. Despite all these restrictions, content scripts are still extremely popular in Chrome extensions because they are the only part of a Chrome extension that can display UI on a page without a pop-up window. 
That's enough for a content script. The next component is the background service worker. Service workers run in the background and listen to messages from other parts of the extension. And they are allowed to access all Chrome APIs that the extension has permissions for, like tabs or bookmarks. However, they don't have access to the DOM of any web pages. So they cannot read or write anything to, on the document object, and they cannot access the window object either. They also have no way to display any kind of user interface to the user. So they are most commonly used to relay any messages between other parts of the extension, the Chrome APIs, and the backend. The third part of a Chrome extension is the pop-up page. These are activated by clicking on a button on the browser toolbar. They may only be triggered this way by clicking on the browser toolbar button and cannot be triggered in any other way, like with a script. Pop-up windows are a convenient way to render a UI in a Chrome extension, but because they must be triggered on a user action, they are much more limited than content script UIs. Since the pop-up window is part of the extension core, they do have permission to access all Chrome APIs, but they do not have permission to access the web page DOM. To summarize this information in a table, the content script has a UI, it can access the page DOM, it cannot access the Chrome API, and it may or may not be able to fetch, depending on the page, content security policy. The service worker is able to access the Chrome API and fetch things, but it does not have a UI and it cannot access the page DOM. Finally, the pop-up page has a UI and can access the Chrome API and fetch things, but it does not have a page DOM, and additionally, it can only be opened with a user action. So the basic pattern is every part of the Chrome extension has permission to some things, but there is no component that has all the permissions you need. So Chrome extensions need to manage a lot of message passing to get the data where it's needed. Let's do an example of a Chrome extension that summarizes the current page using AI. We start with the user triggering an action on the pop-up window. But the pop-up window has no permission to read the contents of the current page. So it needs to send a message to a content script that we have injected onto the page, which has access to the page DOM. The content script knows that it needs to summarize this page, but it does not have permission to query the backend. So it needs to send a message to the service worker. And a listener on the service worker has the permission to make a fetch request on the backend. If everything goes well, the service worker now has the AI summary of the page but it still does not have any way to display this information to the user. So it needs to use message passing again to the content script. The content script now has the AI summary, so it can render the information to the user on the page. For example, by replacing parts of the page DOM with the AI generated summary. Remember when I said you're not allowed to do a fetch request in a content script? The reality is a little bit more complicated. If you try to make a fetch request from most sites, like on wikipedia.org, this works, and you get the response from the server. However, if you try the exact same request on other sites, like github.com, then it refuses because it violates the site's content security policy. The content security policy is a response header returned by the server to tell the browser which operations are not permitted on the website for security purposes. Besides restricting fetch requests, the CSP may restrict other things like which frames may be embedded on the website and which images may be loaded. Since the content script runs in the same execution environment as the page itself, it is affected by the same CSP restrictions. Not every website uses CSP, so some extensions may be able to fetch in a content script. But for an extension that is supposed to work on every site, they will need to proxy these type of requests to a service worker because every CSP policy that may be restricted will be on at least some websites. Another fairly recent restriction that was introduced in Manifest v3 is that Chrome extensions cannot use eval anywhere in the extension, including the content script, pop-up page, and the service worker. The use of the eval function is not very common in modern JavaScript, but many eval equivalents are commonly used. For example, loading a script from a CDN certain uses of the regular expression library, the new function pattern, which is used in many templating libraries, web workers, which is commonly used in multi-threading. All of these JavaScript constructs are considered eval equivalent, so they are not allowed in Chrome extensions. But they are often useful for some situations. So Chrome's solution to this problem is to introduce what's called a sandbox page. 
This is a special page that is isolated from the rest of the Chrome extension and basically cannot do anything except run eval. So the extension must isolate any code that uses an eval equivalent construct into a sandbox page and use message passing to relay any data between the sandbox page and the rest of the extension. But modern JavaScript development uses many packages with complex dependencies. And if any package in the dependency tree happens to use an eval equivalent construct, then a bunch of refactoring will be required to isolate the offending piece of logic into the sandbox page. In a complex project, it may be just more practical to raise an issue in the GitHub project and hope that the maintainers replace the construct with something that is more Chrome extension friendly. So you might be wondering, how did things get so complicated? How did we get here? I did some investigation and found this paper by Google from a few years ago that shed some light onto this question. And the answer might surprise you. Chrome's security model assumes that the extension itself is probably not malicious, but it might be insecure. This is a reasonable assumption because many extensions are developed by people who are not security experts. Early versions of Chrome extensions had vulnerabilities where the attacker could control the page DOM of websites and gain access to the Chrome extension through the content script. There are a number of ways that this can be attempted. For example, cross-site scripting that relies on improper input validation in the content script, or replacing commonly used functions on window or document to do something else. If an attacker can use one of these exploits to gain access to the extension core, that is very dangerous, because the extension has much higher privileges than any website. So the solution was to create a process boundary between the content script and the rest of the extension. Nothing can be shared between the higher privilege and lower privilege parts of an extension, except by message passing. And only strings can be transferred using message passing, not JavaScript objects. This is combined with the fact that no form of eval or similar constructs may be used anywhere in the extension. So even if an attacker can exploit a vulnerability in the content script to pass a message to the extension core, there is no possibility that this message may be executed as JavaScript code. The combination of all these mechanisms make Chrome extensions much harder to attack. All right, that's all I have for this video. Now you have an idea of the world of Chrome extension permissions. If you like this video, check out the Chrome extension I'm working on, voicewriter.io. VoiceWriter lets you speak your thoughts and uses AI to fix your grammar in real time. You can use it on any website. Just click on the link below. As you might have guessed, I definitely had a lot of fun getting the permissions to work for this one. And if you haven't already, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and I will answer it as soon as I can. That's it. Goodbye.